In this episode, questionable photography advice from 1888. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Fine Art Photography Podcast. I've mentioned in previous episodes that I occasionally enjoy skimming through old photography journals and magazines to see what challenges those early photographers faced, to understand their techniques, and to see what issues were preoccupying them back in those days. In many ways, reading these 100-year-old articles reminds me that we are all from the same ilk. They wanted the same things we want, quality lenses, good light, and the best prints possible. I mean, y'all are still printing your work, right? If not, shame on you. Of course, in those days, much of the work was done in the darkroom. Much of it was done with really dangerous chemicals. Some of those chemicals are still used today, but others wisely are relegated to the past. Since many of these old magazines are written for amateurs, it's rather terrifying to realize that a lot of people were using extremely dangerous chemical solutions in their home darkrooms. And of course, working with light-sensitive solutions means that they had stained fingers too. Case in point, I found an article in an 1888 issue of Anthony's Photographic Bulletin called Cleaning Up the Hands, written by Professor Peter T. Austin, Ph.D. of Rutgers College, New Jersey. Now, before I get into the content of the post by Professor Austin, let me also point out that another thing I've realized from reading these old journals. In those days, there were a lot of these types of magazines targeted at photographers. Anthony's Photographic Bulletin was published in New York by E. and H. T. Anthony and Company, from about 1870 to 1902 or something like that. In those days, people read extensive texts, were dense with ideas, but also a ton of chemistry, and they wrote in with responses. Today, we can make comments on social media, but in the 1800s, they wrote long letters to the editor, which would be published in subsequent editions. Anthony's was published twice a month, if you can believe that, and subscriptions cost $3 a year. The issue at hand here is that working in the darkroom would leave photographers with hands stained black, stains that wouldn't wash off. Okay, with that background, let me read you what Professor Austin of Rutgers advised. He uses some slang in this. He uses the terms old birds and chicks in reference to experienced photographers as opposed to newcomers to the practice. Here I'm quoting verbatim. Cleaning up the hands by Professor Peter T. Austin, Ph.D. The method of cleaning up one's hands by means of potassium cyanide, while usually effective, is not particularly pleasant especially for those who are not chemists and hence not accustomed to handling deadly poisons. In fact, the amateur had better go about with dirty hand than undertake a cyanide wash, especially if he has any cuts in his fingers. I suppose the following kink must be known to some of the old birds, but I have never seen it in print and hence promulgate for the benefit of the chicks. After work, and best before the stains have become quite black, give the hand a wash as follows. Pour into a cup about 50 cc of 10% solution of potassium dichromate and add about 10 cc of dilute sulfuric acid, one of acid to five of water. Wet the hands thoroughly in this liquid and rub them well. If spots resist the treatment, wind a towel about the forefinger, dab it in the wash, and scrub the spot. As a rule, the color will come out. When well bleached, wash the hands thoroughly under the tap. Then throw the wash out of the cup, rinse it, fill with water and add enough ammonia to give it a distinct odor. In this liquid, give the hands another good soak and rubbing and wash off under the tap. Now and lastly, give them a good scrubbing with Sapolio. And after the final rinsing, if not as exquisite as one might wish, will still be very respectable for a chemist and at night will not be noticed unless they be very small and beautifully made. Rutgers College, New Jersey. Now in a subsequent issue, a man named Max Bolt replied with this letter. And I'm quoting again. To the editors of the bulletin. Bulletin number one of this year has just reached me, and after having perused it, I feel a great desire to write you a few lines about the article of Professor Peter T. Austin, Ph.D., bearing the title Cleaning Up the Hands. I do not pretend in any way whatsoever to come forth with any criticism or to say that Professor Austin is wrong. But after a personal and rather disagreeable and painful experience with bichromate of potash, or potassium dichromate, as he writes. I feel that it is not only my duty to disagree with him, but to speak a word of warning to those persons whom he calls chicks. For old birds, I'm induced to believe, are fully aware of the dangers which said drug contains. Let me state here again that I am fully posted, and I know what bichromate of potash solutions are and what danger they offer. For years, I've handled them in the carbon process, and like the veteran photographer Mr. Ducochois, 
I've been a victim of it, and for years I've suffered from its dreadful effects and consequences. Of course, if a person has to make up his mind to choose one of the said drugs, and particularly the chicks, let them take by preference the bichromate. But there is, so far as I know, no necessity to use it for said purpose. Those black nitrate stains, even if they do not offer a fine and pleasant aspect for the hands of an amateur, will not look very nice, but by all means would be more reasonable and honorable to keep them than to use such means to get rid of them. Besides, are there no other means to avoid those black stains? Yes. The amateur, who generally is a man of some means, may buy a pair of rubber gloves or may buy ready sensitized paper. The photographer, who does not like to show silver-stained fingers and hands, has at his disposal the iodide of potassium and the hyposulfite of sodium, and I feel sure that if he likes, he knows pretty well how to use these two drugs to clean his hands and fingers. But for those who do not, I will let them know how to proceed. Let them wash their hands with soap and water, and then in a nearly saturated solution of iodide of potassium, say, for two minutes, and after this, wash in the fixing bath for a pretty strong solution of hyposulfite, and all the stains, if not already too long on the skin, will disappear as by enchantment. A good after-washing with soap can do no harm, and this is a simple, effective, and by all means harmless proceeding. The bichromate of potassium, as is well known, has a peculiar power of penetrating into the skin by absorption of the pores, and if repeated often, produces ulcers and eruptions which resist in a surprising way any treatment. I hope these lines will meet your kind attention and find a place in your next bulletin. For I consider it my duty to warn the fraternity against the use of that dreadful drug. Respectfully yours, Max Bolt. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing these photographers from the past discussing issues facing them in their era. I don't know about you, but it makes me appreciate how far we've come and how easy it is for us now. By the way, on the theme of what photographers struggle with then compared to now, listen to these other topics of concern back in 1888. One writer complained about how composite photography was a sham and not really photography. Another opined on the shortcomings of photography in relation to art. And there was a headline that said, Who owns the negative? And still another discussed the best viewpoints for photographing the Yosemite Valley, which in those days was still two years away from becoming a national park. Frankly, you can still see some of these headlines discussed today. Well, that's all I've got for this episode. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again real soon.